Hi everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. There is a frequently asked question that I get, can I can this? And people will run across recipes that sound really good or, there, or that are family favorites and they would love to be able to put it up in a jar in the pantry for easy meals in the future. And it's a great idea. I mean, that's how that's how we can some of the things that we do. Mainly soups, stews, that kind of thing to get us through the winter. So today I thought I would break down how we can determine whether or not we can can something. The easiest thing that I can do for this is my most recent video, which is the 15 bean fiesta ranch soup. Okay, I'll link the video up above and down below in the comment section. And I will also have this broken down much easier in the community tab um, so that you can go look at that also and see how we break it down. So the first thing you need to do is understand that um, there are some things that we should not can, okay? <clears throat> Pardon me, we should not can dairy. We should not can pasta. We should not can rice, barley, flours, um, cheeses. Those, those things are not meant to be canned um, the way that they do commercially. Commercially, they have a whole different process uh, to make it safe, and home canning, we don't have that process available to us. So it is not recommended to can those items, which is fine. There's a lot of things that you can do where if it's a, <clears throat> let's see, it's a soup that normally has a cream base or a cheese base to it, you would put everything else in there, can it, and then when it comes time to eat it, you could add your cream to it then, or you could add your pasta to it then, or your barley or your rice. <clears throat> so it's still a fast meal, it's just not an all-in-one ready-to-go meal. Um, and that's the safe way to can it, okay? So we're going to break down my most recent video, I'll put a link uh, in the description box below, and it is the 15 Bean Fiesta Ranch Soup really really good soup you guys I know that you'll if you try it you'll love it okay if you like Fiesta Ranch mm, 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 hashtag Fiesta Ranch world domination so um, the ingredients for this I have my my cheat sheet over here um, the ingredients for this are one pound of ground beef one diced onion a 28 ounce can of Rotel a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce 32 ounces of chicken stock one package of 15 bean mix and one bag of frozen corn it's that easy easy peasy okay <clears throat> now when you go to make up this recipe if you're making it up to can it you're going to want to at least double the chicken stock that you put in here you're going to need more liquid if you can it because of the beans when you can the beans they will absorb the liquid and so it will come out very 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 thick if you don't increase the liquid on it okay that aside <clears throat> how you determine whether or not you can can something is by the ingredients. Now this recipe has nothing in it that cannot be canned. It doesn't have any rice, pasta, cheese, anything like that. So bonus points there, okay? But we do have ground beef. Now when you can any kind of meat, um, typical rule of thumb with the exception of fish, seafood, is 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts. You want to be able to break down this recipe and know how long you have to can each and every ingredient that goes into it. It's very important. <clears throat> the next is um, the diced white onion. Now, on the National Center for Home Food Preservation, um, there is no recommended uh, times or anything for canning onions. However, um, I'll put a link in the uh, description box below and on the community page. There is uh, reference to canning onions from Clemson EDU and they say that uh, if you're going to can onions that it is for 40 minutes so we've got 40 minutes for onions um, and that is for pints or quarts okay 40 minutes for onions and 75 or 90 for the ground beef now for the Rotel when I looked that up, um, you're not looking for Rotel, you're looking for um, diced tomatoes, okay? And the diced tomatoes are a little trickier because they don't have anything in the book specifically for diced tomatoes. The book that I'm referring to is this one. And you can purchase this book, you can download and print it off yourself, it's cheaper to purchase it, um, or you can just go to the website. I like having a hard copy of everything, so to me this is, this is really important. So when I looked for the tomatoes, um, they did not have the dice. They don't have diced tomatoes, but they do have crushed tomatoes. So 
what I looked what I looked for there was the crushed tomatoes. So for crushed tomatoes, they recommend 35 minutes for pints or 45 minutes for quarts. And that is what I'm basing um, my time on for the Rotel, okay, is 35 minutes for pints and uh, 45 for quarts. Now, the next part of the recipe is for a 15-ounce can of tomato sauce. So I just looked up standard tomato sauce at the National Center for Food Preservation, and they say to can that, it's 35 to 35 and 40 minutes, pints, quarts, okay? Chicken stock, um, or any stock, any meat-based stock, um, is canned for 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts. And then there's the one-pound package of 15-bean mix. <clears throat> and that is, uh, just like the meat, 75 minutes for pints, 90 minutes for quarts. And then there's a bag of frozen corn, and corn is pressure canned for 55 minutes for pints and 85 minutes for quarts. So because I did neglect to say this, um, this when you do soups and stuff like this, it is a pressure canning process, okay? You cannot water bath can this. It's not safe to do so. So it is a pressure canning process. So you break down all those ingredients. Next to the recipe, you write down how many minutes you have to can these for whatever size jar that you have, okay? And then you look at all of those times and you find the one with the longest time, the one that requires the most time. So in this case, for this recipe, it's the ground beef and it's the beans, and that's 75 and 90 minutes. So everything else in there is for 75, it's gonna be pressure canned for 75 and 90 minutes. That's the only safe way to do it. When this gets tricky is when you factor in certain ingredients, okay? Um, there was a pressure canning book that was published not long ago and uh, we told you guys about it and we started going through it and it, it had um, pressure canning bacon and Brussels sprouts. Okay, now, first of all, bacon is not an approved method. A lot of us do canned bacon, okay? Learn why it's not approved. Make decisions for yourself on that. But it uh, pressure canned bacon and Brussels sprouts. Now bacon, being a meat, would require 75 and 90 minutes to pressure can. Brussels sprouts require considerably less. Technically, Brussels sprouts are not an approved uh, vegetable for canning because the microorganisms and air pockets can get caught in the leaves of the bread. It's just like a little cabbage, right? So they can get caught in there. Um, but aside from all of that, by pressure canning Brussels sprouts for 75 to 90 minutes, you are guaranteed to get mush. Just mushy, mushy Brussels sprouts. Um, can't think of a good thing to use these for. Okay. So you've got, you've got one thing that requires a whole bunch of time and one thing that does not require that much time at all. And so when you cook that one that is so drastically different, um, it will compromise the quality and the taste of that one requiring much less time. Um, that is something you have to factor in with some recipes okay and sometimes it's trial and error it really is but you kind of have to be aware of your ingredients and how you prefer them to be cooked and how you prefer them to the texture you prefer them to have now most of the time with things like soups okay um you know you're expecting things to be very soft but not as blatantly soft as 90 minute canned Brussels sprouts, okay? Um, so you wanna factor that part of it in too, but you're gonna break down that recipe, you're gonna put down next to each item how long it would take to can it. You wanna make sure there is no dairy, no flour, no pasta, no rice, no barley. Um, those are all very important because um, they're just not good for canning. Um, either they are not approved like the dairy um, or like the barley and the, and the rice, um, they just expand so much it will destroy whatever's in there and again not approved because they haven't tested it so barley especially will continue to absorb moisture and expand so <clears throat> it'll just come out it'll come out like a big clump you know so that is how you break down a recipe to determine how long to can it now like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I think um, if you're gonna can the 15 bean Fiesta Ranch soup, you're gonna to wanna to add more liquid. 
and you'll realize as you're pouring it into the jars because when you add the beans in there especially with soups and stews that kind of thing you want half of the jar to be the solid stuff and half of the jar to be the liquid because when you can it the solids will absorb the vegetables and the beans will absorb some of the liquid and so if you don't put enough in there it will just create this mass of food in there it won't be a soup do you know what I mean so <clears throat> you want to make sure that you increase liquid sometimes for some of these recipes you'll look at it um, as you're putting it together because with the 15 bean fiesta ranch soup in order to make this what I would do is cook it first and then can it now some of the beans from the 15 bean mix um, will basically disintegrate you know with the canning process after they're cooked but a majority of them will still be there and still be good and bulky and make it a hearty soup um, but in the canning process they will absorb more of the liquid so always remember half the jar is your solids and half the jar is liquid so you may have to increase the amount of liquid and alter some of the recipe that way so the long story short for canning 15 bean fiesta ranch soup is it's 75 minutes for pints and it is 90 minutes for quarts I hope that this helps you um, definitely check out the community page where I will have the recipe listed and the times for each one you can find the times in here for almost everything like I said I had to search for the onion and that's how I ended up um, at a college site one of the extension office sites Clemson EDU um, because they're the ones that had something about canning onions in there it's apparently not an approved method through the USDA but they've got it on that site there <clears throat> if it's not in the USDA book it's a judgment call on your end so try to do some research to see why um, even call them they they take phone calls it's really awesome um, so you can call them you can email them with questions and they will get back to you they're very responsive and they they want to be helpful so definitely reach out to them what are some recipes that you're interested in canning if you have a recipe that you're interested in canning I would love to see it if you would put it in the comment section below and we can break it down and see whether or not it's something that you can can I hope that this was helpful um, and and if you have any questions at all please leave them in the comment section I would love to address those questions too um, but let's see your recipes can I can this let's figure it out Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and don't forget about Twitter. And until the next time, be safe.